In this video, I'm going to describe the specifications of the project where you would be building a scalable, high available, secure infrastructure on cloud for one of the most popular uh, publishing platforms that is WordPress. Just to tell you briefly about WordPress, WordPress is being used very widely by a lot of publishers who, which include blogs, um, you know, news sites and uh, in general you could create uh, your organizational sites or any personal sites as well using this platform. This is a platform which is hosted or which could be hosted or which runs on uh, top of uh, LAMP stack, typically Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Uh, however, you could replace Apache with uh, any other web server. Uh, PHP, it's a PHP application, uh, can be hosted with many other different web servers, including Nginx and uh, whatnot. Uh, typically, the database is MySQL or any other version of MySQL, including, uh, let's say, MariaDB. Now, what you're supposed to do is uh, build an infrastructure um, that has been described in this architecture. So uh, this could be hosted on AWS. This is from the AWS's architecture center, uh, but you could also uh, try to deploy it on uh, even other platforms like Azure or Google uh, Compute Engine uh, by using slightly different uh, set of services there as well. Now, when you look at this um, architecture, it might seem quite complex um, and that is where I'm going to break this project down into multiple phases for you and explain how this is going to work. Uh, before I do that though, let me explain this architecture very quickly. So this is how the user interfaces uh, or interacts with the system. Um, when the users load a site, a particular site, uh, it goes via the Route 53 DNS service. From there it is um, getting um, routed to the load balancer and from there to the web servers here and the database backends, etc. There's also a content delivery service that is Amazon CloudFront in play here and uh, static contents could be pushed to uh, the S3 bucket and could be served out of those as well like images for example or even some text content which can be cached um, here. Now the good thing about, uh, great thing about WordPress is WordPress has these plugins and that is what you're going to discover and use uh, that will be part of your project. I'm going, I'm giving you a very uh, open-ended uh, project specification. I'm not going to go into every detail of this. I'm just giving you a specification at a very high level. Uh, you would discover things on your own like oh, uh, which plugin to use to interact with uh, or introduce let's say memcache or elastic caching service or uh, which plugin to use to push the contents to S3, uh, S3 and maybe CloudFront and use it along with WordPress. WordPress does have an integration with all these services through certain plugins. That's where I'm going to leave that discussion there. And uh, you see the usual um, configuration. If you've gone through, let's say, AWS course of mine, um, you would be aware of VPC. So this is a VPC with uh, public subnets, private subnets. In this case, um, the WordPress instance itself is deployed in the private subnet along with the database and the memcache, um, the caching service, which is also in another uh, set of private subnets here. You see multiple public and private subnets uh, for different availability zones so that you could leverage the concept of regions and availability zones. So there's one region where VPC is hosted, multiple availability zones, and there you have multiple subnets. And uh, the purpose of uh, this NAT gateway, and uh, there are two components in the public um, subnet, NAT gateway and the Bastion host. Uh, this is to provide internet access for, let's say, these servers or even backend servers if they have to, let's say, if you have to log into this and uh, install some packages, etc. Uh, that is the purpose of NAT Gateway and Bastion Host are to give you access to these servers from outside. Let's say you cannot connect to um, the instances directly in the a private submit so you you could go through the bash and host uh, for that purpose now when you look at this architecture in the first uh, when you start looking at it and uh, going through it and i'm going to share this resource with you along with uh, let's say some other document like what are the best practices when you build aws on um, infrastructure for wordpress and certain things which are very useful to understand is how to make for example uh, your application stateless because if, if you have to so this is they talk about dynamic content how it should be handled uh, the database caching that's where you can introduce memcache 
you have the reference architecture of course uh, if you want to scale the web tier the first thing that you have to do is make the web server stateless meaning if you're storing any uh, specific files on e uh, any specific web servers that's going to be a problem and that is where using memcache for sessions maybe and using a common file system uh, i didn't talk about one particular thing about common file system that is amazon efs this is a managed NFS um, service and you can use it to mount um, a particular path or mount to a particular path so you can use common file shared file system and you can mount it to the web servers at a particular path that's where you have this EFS mount targets and so on I want you to discover these things so uh, some of this may have been covered as part of our course some of it may not have been but that's how you approach uh, things and that's how you would possibly be uh, doing things um, with your own projects and your uh, own implementations as well so EFS is something you'll have to discover and uh, see if you can mount it on the web servers so that you can make your application server stateless once you do that you can then set up auto scaling and uh, you know the um, part about auto scaling the um, load balancers target groups uh, launch templates and all of that so that can come in handy uh, but the first uh, prerequisite for all of this to uh, work is uh, having your application stateless now uh, coming back to this architecture when you start deploying this this may seem like too much and this will also go beyond your free tier usage so that's why i've broken it down uh, into different phases and uh, you should at least be completing the first two phases and first uh, three and fourth phase is something that i would leave it to you uh, how to approach it and whether you want to go with it or not so the first thing that you should start with in the phase one is build a VPC with four uh, subnets, two public and two private. This is part of the course already. So you, uh, if you're doing it on Azure, you just need uh, one public and one private. On AWS, you would need uh, VPC with four public, uh, uh, four subnets, two public and two private because you're gonna map it to some availability zones here. Once you do that, you could deploy the WordPress instance. You can use a uh, pre-configured WordPress uh, template, um, let's say by someone like Bitnami or so, um, or you could start with a Linux server and install the WordPress by yourself. This m possibly would be uh, the stateful application. So we'll think talk about be making it stateless, etc. in the second phase. This is a very simple implementation of WordPress where you have an EC2 instance, deploy it in any of the public submits, uh, deploy the database, you can just install MariaDB or MySQL or uh, AWS offers Amazon Aurora. So for example, here you see AWS uh, Amazon Aurora as the database server, but you could choose MariaDB or MySQL nevertheless. So it's gonna work almost similar. Um, you can just create one single instance. You need a subnet group. That's why we have two private subnets, but you can just deploy a single instance with the free tier. So this will help you stick to the free tier. And this is the simplistic setup where you have uh, a WordPress instance in the public subnet and database in the private subnet. That's your phase one. Phase two is where you can add a little more complexity by first making your application stateless. It's just matter of finding out where the WordPress stores all the files. And instead of having that path on this server you store it in the EFS and then mount it at uh, the same path so that whatever the WordPress is writing or reading from or writing to um, is the same place and then you can actually scale it by launching multiple instances this is where you'll talk about uh, uh, scaling WordPress is where you'll bring in auto scaling groups uh, target groups load balancer so you will have to set up a uh, i would recommend using the alb the application load balancer and uh, set up the auto scaling you may define uh, um, you may, can make any assumptions about uh, the policies that you want to use for auto scaling etc uh, optionally you could scale up the database as well this is optional because this will also cost you money this will go beyond the free tier utilization everything else if you are using free tier you can still use it let's say for a few days in a month um, and even if you have multiple instances let's say three instances for 10 days that is reasonable enough that is still under um, your free tier utilization that's your phase two phase two is something that all of you should do 
uh, phase three and four i would leave it to you for um exploring further and uh, what do you want to incorporate in phase three and four let's talk about that one is um you can also incorporate something like uh, um, in memory caching memcache or that is, uh, that is part of a aws service cause called as elastic cache uh, if you're doing this on Azure, you find the equivalent service and try to use that. What it does is basically, instead of sending all the queries to uh, the database directly, you introduce a caching service in between. So the objects from the database, the queries can be cached in here um, in into memcache. To make it work, you'll have to deploy memcache and then you'll have to install some web you know, specific uh, WordPress uh, plugin uh, to leverage and configure the web memcache with, right? So that's something I would leave you to explore on. Uh, in addition to that, you can also push the static content to S3. Again, WordPress comes with some plugin where, you know, you can have it pushed automatically to S3. You can configure S3 along with, let's say, CloudFront, CloudFront being the content delivery system. So um, that would help you um, create a scalable design actually. This is a scalable design. This is a high available scalable design already uh, with all these you know, in-memory caching services. So this is a high performance infrastructure as well. And uh, on top of that, if you want to go even uh, further, now remember some of these, no, not uh, some of these components may be beyond free tier mainly. Uh, e even f with this, um, the database is the only concern about f when it comes to free, um, you know, free tier on exceeding that. Everything else you can still manage it uh, within the free tier if you do it right and if you stick to the free tier services only. Uh, next is where it gets more advanced. And this is closer. The next phase four will be closer to uh, what you see here, because then we would refactor this architecture and make all of this. So instead of the public subnet, you make it private. It's easy to do that. You can just change the route tables um, and switch the route tables and this becomes private. As soon as this becomes private, you lose access. So the load balancer, actually the load balancer should have been in the public subnet. Um, let's you know, let's have a look at that. You, I'll leave that uh, to you to explore whether this should be in public or private. It may be in private or public, you explore that. Now, in addition to uh, this being private, now how do you access these servers from outside and how do you provide internet access to uh, these private servers is where you'll have to introduce NAT gateway and bash and host um, in, in a respectively NAT gateway for providing external access. So if you want to install something here uh, from the internet, you need to configure it via NAT gateway. So you'll have to go to the route table for the private subnet and the route has to be via the NAT gateway. NAT gateway is the additional com com you know, component. Again, NAT gateway is going to cost you money uh, along with uh, bash and host as well. So if you want to stick to free tier, uh, don't create it. Stop at the phase three itself. And uh, Bash and Host will give you sort of a jump. It acts like as a jump host, so you can jump uh, on this server. This is in public domain and uh, public subnet. And from there, you can log into your uh, internal services and uh, access those as well. You could also do that via SSH tunnel and so on. So that's the additional configuration. You can experiment further with Route 53 as well. Uh, but for that, you need a domain or you'll have to have a way to just edit some host file locally uh, to point to that uh, domain and that will go through the Route 53. So again, I'll leave that uh, those configurations to you. This is where you'll explore on your own a lot. And this, if you build until uh, for fa phase four, uh, you know, if you do complete this, right, uh, this particular phase, you are going to get um, an infrastructure that you see here, actually. Uh, by the way, the application load balancer has to be in the public subnet. You can reference this document uh, to find out how this is going to work. Um, you can have auto scaling here. You can have auto scaling for the web servers, uh, NAT gateways, bash and host. I've spoken about that S3 bucket, uh, CloudFront on top of that, Route 53 which will decide where to send the traffic to from the domain. Um, behind the web servers, you have database. Database can be high available, multi-AZ. Uh, in between that, you can optionally implement Elastic Caches and then EFS mount for making your application servers stateless and storing the data uh, in the shared 
uh, network file system that is um, Amazon EFS. So you start referencing this document for uh, your architecture and then you can look at these phases and uh, decide uh, which phase you want to go and implement and accordingly configure that. That's your project and you can implement this on Azure as well by replacing the services that you already know about. Um, you know, let's say instead of VPC, VNets, subnets remain the same. Um, VMs instead of the web servers, uh, database services, there are plenty of those services, blob storage for instead of S3, etc. So give this a try and this is your project for the cloud computing where you're deploying at the end of it, um, you would have a scalable, high available um, infrastructure built for this publishing platform that is WordPress. And you should definitely, you would learn a lot while going through this particular project. Uh, that's it. Um, get, you can get started using the reference documents, um, so, you know, that are provided uh, along with this video lesson and uh, possibly along with the, uh, this, you would receive a document uh, as well. So all the best with this project.